I don't know about you guys, but I'm always looking for cool ways to try out weapons and attachments in Battlefield 4. There are so many unique combinations that can make a gun better or worse for particular playstyles that finding one that really works can sometimes be tricky, especially when the gun you're using is not one you'd normally touch. That is the situation I found myself in with the SAR-21, a weapon that I've barely touched since I first unlocked it some time back. But I think I found what is currently an absolute beast of a weapon when it comes to control. You always want to be in control of your weapon, especially when it comes to pulling yourself out of a tricky situation. I think I found probably the best setup for players who want to be on point when it comes to hitting the target. So, to give you a rundown of the SAR-21, it is of course an assault rifle, which comes to you pretty early on in the ranking process, only requiring you to collect 19,000 points as an assault player. With the game having been out for two years now, unless you're a brand new player to the game, this weapon will already be in your inventory. Packing a max damage of 24 up close, extending out to 18 damage at 60 meters, and a rate of fire of only 600 rounds a minute? This is a weapon that's not graced with huge damage potential. It's almost like the weapon is trying to trick you, like, don't pick me, nah, you, you really don't want to pick me. When really, once you look past the headline stats, you start to see that this thing is a hidden gem. Muzzle velocity is 650 meters a second, meaning bullets reach their target fairly sharpish, and with a slow rate of fire, the weapon immediately places itself in the category of a long-range assault rifle. It'd do you proud in most rounds of rush when you're first starting to push for the objectives, and that pesky support player is setting up his goddamn claymore on the MCOM. I hate that guy. But once you move in closer, you'd be better off playing an Overwatch role, focusing on the objective, but maybe letting your teammates do the arming this round. And this is where the control of the weapon becomes really important. A naked SAR-21, no attachments at all, has an upwards recoil of only 0.18. That's it. That's barely even worth mentioning. This thing is laser accurate at medium to long range, which makes it absolutely perfect for playing that Overwatch role as the rest of your team push in hard to take an objective. Picking off outlying defenders one by one from a safe distance so you aren't suddenly under threat. To make the weapon sound even more appealing, the side-to-side -side recoil is also an insanely low 0.145 to the left and to the right. See what I mean about this thing being the king of control? And we haven't even begun to discuss attachments yet. I always roll with a red dot sight on my assault rifles, and that's mainly because I'll choose a weapon with a high rate of fire. Using a weapon like the AEK with the Cobra sight is just learned behaviour for me now. Battlefield 3 taught me how good of a combination that can be. And you're most likely going to be using a high rate of fire weapon in close quarters, in that environment as you can do more damage quicker than someone else who might be running a slow-firing PDW, for example. But with the SAR-21, as it does indeed come with that slow rate of fire, and you'll be using it at ranges that a red dot sight might not be exactly tuned for, then using something like a 3.4x, or one of my personal favourites, the 4x JGM4 scope, might be a little bit more useful and yield you better results. Don't forget, the extremely low recoil of the SAR will stop the sight bouncing around all over the place. For the barrel, I'd say the heavy barrel is a safe bet, as it'll tighten the spread of your bullets as you fire. As you're most likely going to be using the SAR at medium to long range, there's going to be less need for you to move around as you fire, meaning that 50% reduction in the spread of the bullets when you aren't moving that you get with the heavy barrel will likely come in very handy. The heavy barrel does slightly increase the upwards recoil of the weapon to 0.234, but again, that's a very low value and one that probably won't bother most players who are happy controlling recoil anyway. If you do feel like that that's not really good enough or you're not great at handling recoil, then I'd say try the muzzle brake, which does drop the upwards recoil a bit compared to the heavy barrel, but you lose the bullet spread decrease bonus that the heavy barrel did give you. 
And finally, the grip. I found the ergo or the vertical grip, they're exactly the same in Battlefield 4, to be the most helpful in keeping the SAR as laser-like accurate as possible. Remember I mentioned about using this gun at long range and that means you're less likely to be moving and shooting at the same time? Yeah, well, should you be caught out a bit and actually have a need to move and shoot at long range, maybe provide some covering fire for an enemy or provide covering fire for yourself, the ergo grip will help here, reducing the spread of the bullets meaning more of them are likely to hit the target. But that doesn't mean it's just better when you stand still and shoot in Battlefield 4. You get a massive bonus for standing still and shooting somebody, so if you can avoid moving when you're trying to kill somebody, then you're probably going to end up with better results than if you were moving all over the place. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the king of control. I found this setup to be stupidly flat and accurate. Recoil is easy to control and shooting targets at range is a cinch. Try it for yourself, I'd say console users with that analogue stick will find this setup particularly satisfying. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, leave me a thumbs up as well because I hope you enjoyed the video. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.